Miss Gingold, Sir. it is reported that you are working on an autobiography, the title of which is How to Grow Old Disgracefully. Is that Absolutely true? Absolutely right. What does that mean? Well, I'm not working at it at the present moment because, uh, you know, one thing at a time. And, uh, but I'm collecting, collecting bits and pieces for chapters. What's the disgraceful part? I'm not going to tell you. You buy the book. Are there going to be some startling revelations? Uh, yes. About what? I'm not going to tell you. You're terrible. Well, I mean, it'll be 1595, I'm sure. Can't we even have 50 no, cents I'll worth? I'll send you a copy. Oh, that would be wonderful. Ms. Gingold, your career, if one is to believe your official biography, extends a wonderful 75 years in the 75 English and American years? theater. Well, that would make me what? Well, I don't know, but I wonder if you have observed any changes in entertainment during that time. Oh, yes. It used to be the theatrical profession, and now it's showbiz. What's the difference between theater and showbiz? Oh, the difference is terrific. I'm not going to explain it because it takes far too long, but I know that you really know what the difference is, and that's just a question, right? Well, let's have just an answer then, perhaps. <laughs> well, the answer is showbiz is rather tacky, don't you think? And the theatrical profession gives it rather a lift. Showbiz reminds me of sort of half-nude girls rushing around the stage to keep warm. And um, the theatrical profession is Shakespeare and restoration comedy and good acting. Does that answer your question? I think it answers the question beautifully, may I say. <laughs> You've worked in many media, movies, Television, the stage, yes. do you have any favorite medium? The stage. Why is that? Well, the theater, I was brought up in the theater, although none of my family has ever been in the theater. My poor mother nearly had a fit when I said I wanted to go into the theater, but the moment she got used to the idea, she was very good and she sent me to the best teachers. I learned dancing and French and fencing and music and singing cooking. <laughs> I did, don't see where that got me, really, but still. Did she think the theatre was slightly disreputable? Is that why she was upset? No, and, no. Well, there was at one time, and perhaps still is, a prejudice against people who are oh, I don't in the theatrical think so. profession. Actors are so tired all the time. They haven't any feelings about getting into trouble. At least I think so. I've heard a story told, and I want to know if it's true, if you can tell me, that you almost did not get the part of Madame Armfelt in the first production. Absolutely of right. Uh, Edith Evans was the first consideration, and she s wouldn't do it. And I thought, well, if Edith Evans can do it, I can do it. And if it's worth her while, it's worth my while. And uh, uh, Harold Prince, Hal Prince, <laughs> said, Oh, no, not Gingold. She's awfully good on talk shows, but I don't think she can act. And his casting woman, who was a doll, said, well, why not give her a chance, give her an audition? And I hadn't auditioned for a play in 15 years. I should think you more. reach a point where one does not audition anymore. <laughs> and I thought, an audition? Well, really. However, I auditioned for it. And I only knew one song, because I'm not really a singer. What song did you do? Uh, it Was Worth It by Bart Howard. Yeah. It's a wonderful song. Mabel Mercer used to sing yeah. it. And I had the audacity to sing one of her songs. And it took some audacity, too. And however, I sang it. And then they said, uh, now sing something else. And I had to say, I don't know anything else. <laughs> However, I'll sing it again if you want. And they said, we want. So I sang it again, muddled the words, because I was by then rather frightened, and uh, got the part. And that was it, success on the spot then? Yeah. Have you played the role often since the Broadway and London productions? No, I've never played it. You've never done it since well, those original oh, well, productions? Oh, well, I did it the film in oh, uh, yes. Vienna. What is it like coming back to a part after having been well, away from it easy. so many years? It's not easy because this is a f new production of it. We've only got two weeks, and it's not easy for me, probably for everyone else it is, but for me it's not. It's perhaps even more it's difficult. It's going to be, I think it's going to be quite wonderful, 
and it's got things in which I like enormously, and uh, I have no fault to find except with myself, and I could kick myself for not finding it easy. I don't find it easy. Well, nothing worth achieving is supposed to be easy, is it? I don't know. It may even be more difficult to come back to a role. I think it with is. With the overlay of what you have I done before, is. than I to come fresh is. to it. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't mean to put words in your mouth. <laughs> I'm told, Miss Gingo, that you find Houston has too much glass in it. Is that a uh, oh, yes. problem with our architecture here? It, I think it's awfully frightening. I, last night, we walked through the business section after dark. Well, that's dangerous by itself right there. Is it? Yes, I wouldn't do that. Oh, well, we didn't know, and so we did. I thought it was rather dangerous. However, and... Uh, well, you're the I, adventurous I, type, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> the buildings I found to be too modern uh, and frightening, all that steel and glass. I found it absolutely frightening. What sort of architecture do you prefer? Oh, any, practically any architecture that doesn't have a lot of glass about it. Well, I'm afraid that uh, this is not the right setting for you I mean, in that I like respect. Regency houses. Yes. We have a wonderful terrace up by Regent's Park in London, which was pure Regency. Well, came the war and it got bombed completely. And they did a rather clever thing. They kept the front Regency and the rooms Modern. Aha, uh -huh. have the best of both worlds that so they way. They have then, the eh? best of both worlds. What do you like to do when you're not performing, to relax <laughs> and enjoy yourself? I like to go shopping. I like to see other plays. Do you I'm attend not... the theater a good bit uh, in New York? Hmm? Do you attend the theater frequently when you're in New not York? Not frequently. I never go unless I'm really recommended. What's the best thing you've seen in the last year? La Cage au Fall was wonderful. Oh, the last year. Yes. Oh, I can't remember. Ad uh, Adameus, uh, what's it called? Amadeus? Yes. The one about uh, Mozart. Yeah. Yes, yes, that was wonderful. Beautifully acted and wonderfully directed. And I think you have just described this production of a little night music. Beautifully well, acted maybe and I wonderfully have. directed. Yes, I didn't mean to, but I have. And I hope by the next time you come back to Houston, we can have a few Regency buildings uh, perhaps reconstructed for you. Well, I think all the glass will probably blow out and you'll be forced to use something else. You yes. may have noticed a lot of the glass did blow out in the hurricane we had recently. <laughs> I knew it would. You were probably there cheering and applauding when the panes fell no, down. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. But it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, it is, but uh, such is the way of progress. Hermione Gingold, thank heavens you haven't changed. No, I haven't. <laughs>